In this video, I'm going to be discussing the financial potential of crypto and digital assets. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Vandel Algera. I'm the co-founder of Black Swan Capitalist. My brother Versan and I simplify financial markets, digital assets, cryptocurrency, currency debasement, gold, and market cycles. Our goal is to give you an unfair advantage so that you can strategically position yourself during the greatest wealth transfer in history. So by the end of this video, you'll understand why crypto and digital assets are the best performing risk adjusted reward asset class, the key market dynamics driving their value and the essential strategies so that you can maximize your financial gains while navigating the inherent volatility and pitfalls in this crypto market. So investing in crypto and digital assets, especially in this market, is currently one of the most promising opportunities to achieve significant financial gains. You can almost compare it to the dot-com bubble and the dot-com boom when technology and the internet, the Google and Amazon were just getting started. And many mainstream economists, so-called experts, were telling people to stay away from it. And most people listen because the truth is, if you want to do things the wrong way, a wise man once said, just follow everyone. So we don't do that. We do the opposite and that's why we succeed financially, physically, spiritually. And that's what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna break down what you can do and how you can understand these markets better so that you really have an edge. So as someone who's closely followed this space for a long time, over four years now, I can confidently say that this asset class offers the best performing risk adjusted reward available today. And as I mentioned earlier, it's been like that since 2013. The key is really understanding the market dynamics and leveraging them to your advantage. That's really what you want to do. So understanding the market dynamics. We'll start there. One of the fundamental principles to grasp is the relationship between liquidity and asset prices. This is very important. As liquidity increases in the market, so do the prices of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. This is driven by a combination of different factors, including growing investor interest, technological advancements, and increased utility and adoption of blockchain technology on a mainstream scale. We're seeing that happen now very gradually. Uh, several years ago, a few years ago, we were talking about this. People were calling us crazy. And I love that line. I'm not sure how it goes exactly, but what's the difference between a conspiracy theory and reality? And I think they say six months, but we're coming to find that out right now for this particular subject. Many others as well, but let's stay on point here. So, however, it's crucial to recognize that the crypto market is highly volatile. We already know that. If you've been following the crypto market, you know that it has huge price volatility and swings, and you can't deny it. Massive corrections are pretty much an inherent part of the market cycle. And I'm going to be making a video on market cycles as well. Now, these corrections, you know, while they're challenging, set the stage for explosive growth, in my opinion, in the money supply and subsequent price increases are going to come as a result. So following these corrections, we often see a surge in mainstream hype and adoption, further driving up prices even higher than what they already are. Now increased liquidity is not just about more people buying into the market. It's about the technological infrastructure improving, which allows more seamless transactions and higher trading volumes to start taking place. Innovations such as decentralized finance, DeFi platforms, 
non-fungible tokens, which are NFTs, and advancements in blockchain, interoperability contribute significantly to the liquidity. So, the fallacy of Wall Street. We have to talk about this and Wall Street and their predictions. Well, Wall Street has a reputation for being able to predict the market movements. They get paid a lot of money to convince you that they know what's going to happen next. But the reality is often quite different. They actually don't know. And the people that do follow Wall Street, I call them the masses because typically those are the ones that get wrecked and set themselves up for substantial failure and loss in the markets. Remember, Wall Street will start telling you about it when it's already done, set and done, which is pretty much the third stage or second stage of a bull run. And that's when the masses start piling in. Now, despite their high pay, they get paid very well to do this and convince you they know what's going to happen next. And despite their resources, Wall Street experts are wrong about the market predictions most of the time. So I'm not a financial advisor, but I would highly advise not fi following their financial advice. I mean, look at history. Uh, a good example is Dr Jim Cramer. You know, everything he says is going to happen, the opposite happens. Now, a wise man once said, and I said this earlier, but if you want to be wrong, follow everybody. And that's exactly the opposite of what we do. This crypto market is a prime example of what's, what we're just talking about. The majority often miss the mark, while the informed, few bright minority recap and get involved early so that they could reap the rewards. And that's basically how it always plays out. Wall Street operates on models and assumptions that do not really always account for the rapid technological advancements like what we're seeing now and the disruptive nature of the crypto market. Traditional financial metrics and evaluation methods, all that technical stuff they do often fall short in this fast paced environment. And it's interesting because crypto and blockchain technology, digital assets have a faster adoption rate and faster growth in the same period of time that the internet was growing, except this is a much faster adoption growth in terms of scale. The internet didn't even get adopted this fast. And a lot of those innovative companies from the dot-com era. So the decentralized and global nature of cryptos, cryptocurrencies, of course, it's not all decentralized, but let's just say that for now. But the nature of that within these cryptocurrencies and this crypto ecosystem means that they're influenced by a broader range of, you know, factors compared to traditional assets. Um, however, though, they're still manipulated. And that's the truth. Making Wall Street's predictions obviously less reliable. The fact is they, they, a lot of the things they tell you <clears throat> are because they're paid to tell, tell you that. So just be extremely uh, cautious and careful what advice you take when it comes from Wall Street and some of these talking head uh, media people and pundits. Now, let's talk about the future of financial systems. This is really a big topic because some digital assets out there are focused on creating liquidity solutions, um, interoperability solutions to bridge the traditional financial system with the new financial system that we're moving to and even just bridge different blockchains together. Now, in the coming years, we can expect significant changes in our financial system. Versan and I, we talk about this a lot with each other and with our guests on the show. And anybody paying attention knows that we're having significant transitions within the financial system taking place as we speak. 
it's only accelerating is really what it seems like on a day-to-day -day basis. But as blockchain and digital technologies mature and get more widely accepted and adopted, traditional investing strategies will become less effective. The rapid pace of change in this space requires a new approach to investing. And that's why we pay attention to blockchain technology, crypto and digital assets, because we understand that. One that embraces innovation and adaptability certainly would get an edge over other investors. And the key is getting in early. I always say this and I reiterate it, but there are three stages in a bull run. There's the first stage where a very few minority of bright people are able to see that the market or the asset class is tremendously undervalued and they get in at the bottom of the bull market. The second stage is when quite a few people, a lot, not 99%, but most people feel like the market is going to continue going up. These asset prices are fairly valued and they're going to continue going up. And this is the stage where many people get in. They don't get wrecked. They don't get a bargain, but they don't make the, they don't get the best deal they possibly could because they didn't get in early, which is the first stage. They're getting in at second stage, but they don't get wrecked either. They make a decent return. They do okay. And then you have the third stage of the bull market. And this is referred to as the top. And this is when 99% or most of the people, the masses that follow the news, the mainstream media, they follow Wall Street advice, Jim Cramer and some other talking heads. This is the third stage of the bull market where most people hop in. And this is what most people do. They get in so late, they get in at the top and regardless if it's a year or two years, they're still at the top, even though it might stay there for a while, you're still getting in at the top. And what this group of people, the third stage, they're setting themselves up for substantial loss and failure because when something's in a bubble and it's at the top, you have to understand that this is why we emphasize market cycles because market cycles are driven by people. And as long as people and their nature never changes, market cycles will never change. And market cycles is like a collective representation of people's behavior and emotions, like gr greed and fear, you know? And that reflects in the market. And that's why we have market cycles. It's greed and fear from retail investors and professionals and institutional investors too, hedge funds, you know, whatever you want to call it. But that third stage is when the market is at its peak in the bull run. And what happens after that? That's when the corrections happen and they take place and liquidity comes out and liquidations happen. And people that got in at the third stage at the top too late, they substantially set themselves up for failure and financial loss. They don't typically win or make any great returns. They lose money in this case. Now, as blockchain technology, you know, it's very promising. It's going to revolutionize various sectors of the economy beyond finance. I feel like that's why it's important to get in early because it's not just a trend. It's here to stay. And we always iterate this. But if you own a piece of the digital asset, or if you own the token, the digital asset or the cryptocurrency, if there is strong utility there, real world use case solving multi-billion or multi-trillion dollar issues in the world that already exist, you're setting yourself up for success because it will not go away. And solutions like that are in high demand from institutions and banks as well on a global scale. Now, 
when you own these tokens with utility like we just discussed, you're basically purchasing and owning a piece of the network, a piece of the tech, a piece of the blockchain and the protocol. And in essence, you're not a crypto investor. You're a technological blockchain investor. That's how I look at it. And I hate the word cryptocurrency because it puts a bad taste in most people's mouth. And that's why when you walk up to somebody on the streets, they say, you talk about cryptocurrency and they think instantly scam because that's what they've been conditioned to believe. And obviously they're not really intellectual or good at researching, so they don't know what's going on. But uh, let's talk about supply chain management, healthcare, real estate, and even voting systems stand to benefit from the transparency, security, and efficiency of blockchain technology. And this, why, this is why there's going to be even more demand in the future for those reasons. That is considered real-world use case and utility. Yes. Now, this widespread adoption will further integrate digital assets into the fabric of everyday life, making them a crucial component of any forward thinking investment strategy. If you know it's here to stay and you're early, you should see it as a bargain, as a Black Friday sale. You're getting a deal and you need to change your mindset and start thinking long-term horizons. Not thinking I'm gonna make a million bucks or make some crazy gains in just a couple days or a couple weeks or months. You can if you're lucky, but if that's what you're into, you might as well just go play the lottery. You need to think of this as a long-term investment and that's how you'll succeed. Look at fundamentals. And as long as the fundamentals and the value is still there, regardless what the price is doing, you can expect that that price and the value will be reflected within the price in the near future. Now let's talk about projecting the market cap. This is a big topic. People talk about market cap all the time. And I have my own theories, but I have to clarify this. Market cap is just a psychological metric. Okay, your market cap could be A and Z, whatever it is, 100 billion, for example. But the market cap does not take into account future adoption and growth and liquidity that can come in. So literally, over a span of a year or two, or even a few, the market cap could triple or quadruple. So how can you base your investment thesis off market cap and your, your forecasting and price projections off the current market cap if you don't know what the market cap is gonna be next year or in two years? This is what happened with Amazon. Their market cap was so small, and then all of a sudden, when they started growing, started earning more, revenue for the company started expanding on a global scale, more use case, more demand for their services and products, more utility, the market cap exploded out of nowhere. And thus you had a reflection in the price for other various factors as well, but it did reflect in the price because the market cap, the current market cap does not mean it's going to be tomorrow's market cap. So throw that crap out of the window. It's not going to do you any good. Um, now, you know, some may wonder why I believe the crypto market cap will reach between six and nine trillion in this cycle, which I still believe till today. And the reason is, I think it could reach between six trillion to nine trillion dollars near or in the peak of this bull run cycle, which takes us into 2025. And the reason I think that is because in late 2020, the cryptocurrency market cap peaked about approximately near $3 trillion in 2020. Now, based on various indicators and factors, I'm confident that the market cap will at least double or triple that peak. So if it reached about $3 trillion, I could see it going between $6 and $9 trillion. That's That's how I was coming up with that figure. Of course, I could be wrong, but that's my belief, and we'll see what happens. Only time would tell. While no investment or investment strategy is perfect, the potential for substantial returns in this crypto market 
is undeniable. All you gotta do is look at the history, look at the returns, and look at the charts. Now, factors, contribu con factors that contribute to this growth include, obviously, it's liquidity, which comes from uh, many different sources, but institutional adoption, regulatory clarity, technological advancements, and just more liquidity coming into the system, more capital flowing in. Now, major financial institutions are increasingly offering crypto-related services, tokenization, blockchain technology, solutions, legitimizing this asset class. That's pretty much where it's going. And once regulations are solidified and there's a clear regulatory framework for these companies and technologies to operate within the system and be compliant, you're gonna see even more companies emerge more public announcements for specific use cases regarding blockchain that you haven't heard of yet. They will come out when the time is right. And you're going to find out that even more blockchain and technology, blockchain technology and crypto companies going bust because regulatory clarity is also a weeding out of the bad companies and the bad actors. And we're not there yet, but we're still in the stages of that unfolding. Moreover, as governments around the world develop clearer regulations, the uncertainty that has historically hindered growth in this ecosystem is pretty much being reduced. That's what you can expect. So finally, technological innovations, such as layer two solutions and advancements in smart contracts, which are growing rapidly they're enhancing the scalability and the functionality of blockchain networks, making them more attractive to investors. So as we can see, there's a lot of growth here and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. I think it's going to continue to accelerate even faster in the coming year and the next year going into 2030. The psychology of market timing. So this is very important. One of the most critical aspects of investing in crypto is understanding market psychology. Why? Well, look at this. Less than 1% of the world's population bought Bitcoin at its lowest points. In contrast, 99% of investors tend to buy at the top. And this is what we talked about earlier. Only to get caught in the market correction orchestrated by the one percent this is the three stages we talked about earlier when people buy at the top of the market which is the third stage in the bull market at the peak and then the market has a correction and they get wrecked and have substantial loss when bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies reach new all-time highs this is when mainstream media will undoubtedly cover the story extensively all over the media this happened in 2020 and 2021. This coverage entices the masses to invest, often leading to a rug pull by the early investors. See, people that are in early institutions, sophisticated investors, they have to sell their crypto to somebody. And this is when the masses get in at the top and they buy the crypto. So in essence, What's happening is when you're selling your crypto, you're using the people that got in at the top as exit liquidity. And this is what institutions and hedge funds and big financial institutions, this is what they do. They use the retail investor as exit liquidity. And you don't want to be that victim. You want to get in early. So understanding human psychology and behavior in financial markets is crucial. It's extremely important and this whole thing the fear of missing out also known as FOMO often drives investors to buy during these peaks while fear uncertainty and doubt also known as FUD causes them to sell during a dip or a correction because they don't understand the market cycles they don't understand the corrections and that's why I want you to have this information so that you understand that just a correction or a dip 
actually is not a bad thing. As a matter of fact, it's healthy in the markets. And if I could add to that, for me personally, if it's a decent dip or a correction or significant enough, I see that as a buying opportunity. For me, it's like a Black Friday sale and I say that all the time because I see it as I'm getting a deal and I know the market's gonna go back up. Successful investors learn to recognize these emotional triggers and they make decisions based on rational analysis rather than crowd sentiment and following the hype and the mainstream media. Now let's talk about navigating market performance. To successfully navigate the crypto market, it's essential to understand and anticipate market performance patterns. These include dips, flat cycles, corrections, and crashes. These are all stages that are part of the cycle and it's regular for this to happen and it's completely normal. Investors who can recognize these patterns and set realistic expectations are much better positioned to capitalize on opportunities and mitigate your risk. And that's how you have to think about it. Strate excuse me, strategies such as dollar cost averaging can help mitigate the risks of volatility. By investing a fixed amount at regular intervals, you can reduce the impact of short-term price fluctuations, which gives you an advantage. And that's why personally, I do dollar cost average. I DCA in specific cryptos and digital assets. Been doing that for over four years now. Additionally, diversification across different digital assets can help spread the risk. And even if you believe so much in a specific project, which I do, I have a handful that I do believe in, I know they're going to appreciate in value significantly. I know they're very undervalued. I still have a diverse portfolio and not only in the crypto markets and digital asset markets, but even beyond that, that's what diversification is. Gold, silver, precious metals, whatever it is, stocks, mining companies, defense companies. You wanna spread your risk, so it's just like an insurance policy. You, you have to diversify. And if you're only in the crypto space, at least be diversified in the crypto space, at least have a few handful of utility digital assets that you truly believe in to make sure they have real utility. I'm going to make a whole video on that explaining my investment thesis and what it's built around. Market cycles is one of them, but utility and real world use case is a huge component of my investment thesis as well as my brothers and other factors as well, but we'll make a video on that. So it's also important to stay informed on market trends that are taking place in the world and technological developments to make educated investment decisions. And if you're watching this, then you're already ahead of the crowd because you understand the technological developments taking place in the crypto and blockchain space, which gives you an edge because now you can acquire these assets early before 99% of the world realizes it and it would be too expensive by that point. It's not gonna be able to create life-changing wealth for people getting in at the peak. It's not gonna happen. It doesn't work like that. To create life-changing wealth, you have to get in early. Now, I just wanna mention this. Versan and I offer personal consultations and one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you're interested in any of these topics we cover, book a one-on-one -on -one call with us. We'll be happy to speak with you. We can review your portfolio, discuss exit strategies, talk about hardware wallets, even assist you with that and helping you better understand self-custody. We could talk about market cycles because that's what we really focus on deeply. Gold, precious metals and why they're important and just help you prepare for the peak of the bull run that is coming starting in 2024 going into 2025. In conclusion, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to say the crypto and digital asset markets offer unparalleled financial opportunities that we have never seen in history. For those who are really willing to learn and adapt, this could be life changing. By understanding the market dynamics, the technology, the market cycles, where this is going, and the traditional financial system, as well as avoiding the pitfalls of mainstream media and predictions, and recognizing the involving, excuse me, the evolving financial landscape, you can better position yourself for life-changing wealth and financial gains. The potential for growth in this market is truly immense, and I don't think we've seen anything yet. Remember, utility hasn't even really kicked in yet. Liquidity will drive these markets at the peak of the cycle. But wait until utility kicks in and invites more liquidity into the system. That's when you're gonna see these market caps go beyond what you've ever imagined for some of these digital assets. And with the right strategy, you can be among the few that actually capitalize on this opportunity. Remember, the future of investing in digital assets and those who embrace this shift and understand what's taking place can participate in it and you'll be rewarded. Anyway, until next time, you guys, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.